Uh, hey. Welcome to another episode of Damn Internet You Scary. Oh, uh, gosh. We, we, we talking food a little bit today. Hey, man, I'm with it. Because um, we in the future. Mm-hmm. We are in the future. And uh, you like steaks, right? You're like a oh, steak guy. Absolutely. Steakhouse? Absolutely. I get mine medium rare. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Still enough pink in there so where it holds in the juices. It's always tender. Okay. Um, go to a place, uh, my favorite steakhouse. They don't really marinate the steaks. They do what they call a, a, a butter bath. They give the, the steaks a butter bath and they submerge it in, in butter and it sits like that. It's and it's just, man, it is it's the best steak I've ever had in my life. I'll just tell y'all that. All right. Steaks, steaks are, are, are fire. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Your waiter comes out, brings you a steak with some mashed potatoes, smells, right. looks good, and they're like, just so you know. Mm-hmm. This isn't a real steak. Excuse me, what now? It was it was three D printed. No, we're not doing that. But I'm gonna still, try it a little still bit. real cow tissue I'm tr- though. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it, and I'm okay. like, all right. So wait, how does the weight work with this one? Do I still gain weight off of this, or is this, <laughs> that's because that's what no, really that's, comes down that'll to. Start if out. I don't gain no weight off of it, yeah, go ahead, hand me the three D printed steak. Well, I, I think tissue wise, it would be the same. So the weight change wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> that wouldn't happen. <laughs> but the there is a Israeli food lab that made the world's first three D printed steak with real cow tissue. And there were no live animals hurt or killed in the process. I want to talk to the people three months after they ate. It. They ate whoever, it. whoever ate that, I want to talk to them three months later. Like, how, so how do you feel? How, how are things right. at home? Right. Have you killed any of your children? Are you, what, <laughs> like, what's, are you still walking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you? Do you just be driving and then randomly start moo? Like, I want to know. <laughs> like they became a cow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tissue was still like the Laura tissue was, was never still developing the same. in that steak, right? So they print the steak and it's still developing, and now it? it has attached to their DNA. So it's a splice type of moo, 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 It's a mumin, a moomin, a moomin, a moo. <laughs> wow, I don't think that's how DNA works. <laughs> You don't know. You don't know when it comes to 3D printing. You don't know, but you don't know. <laughs> That's true, though. There's only two things that matter. Is it safe and is it delicious? Like, it has to taste the same. We can't be like, mm, yeah, this is so much oh, This right. is so much better because no cows are dying. Like, right. if, it's, if it tastes the exact same and it's safe, <laughs> I'm for it. Why not? Because I feel like what they feeding us ain't safe anyways. <laughs> and at some point when you were born, somebody had to tell you what a cow was. Yeah. And then they had to tell you that they slaughtered it to make this stuff that you're eating. So we had to process that. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's the yeah. same as processing that this is 3D printed steak. It's weird. It's really weird. Really weird. I mean, the first the, when you first hear something like that, you'd be like, no, nah, that's the devil. I'm not messing with that. Uh-huh. But then you think about it, it's like, I, if it's less cows getting hurt, it also means that there are less cows that they have to, you know, you know, herd and you know, right. cattle up, and then it, that helps the ozone because ca- cows be farting. They be big farting. That's crazy that that's when you when you find out that that's why our ozone is like messed up. That's one of the reasons. I'm not gonna put it all reason. on the, the cows. It's a big but, reason. They just be farting and and cows be farting. And it's like that's not true. Is that true? And the scientist just looking back at you like what? Nigga. <laughs> like cow farts? That's why. That's why mm-hmm. we okay. Well. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, that, that's actually a, the main reason. Now that I think about it, maybe fighting. Now you don't have to. Uh, we don't have to. I mean, it's not like cows are gonna go extinct if we do this. But, no, and the, there's still gonna be cow farts. People gonna still want the milk, which is like oh, Angel right. loves cow milk. Oh, she don't. She, she ain't don't fuck nothing. with that almond milk. She ain't fucking with that oat milk. She ain't <sighs> fucking with none of that type of shit. God damn it, she fucking with that young cow milk to this day. As an adult. With 14 kids of her own, <laughs> and she's still breastfeeding the youngest one. She still be fucking with that moo milk. I love. I, I used to be like that. I used to be the weird person to pour a glass of milk and drink it, just straight up. No no cereal. No 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 other stuff. I used to just drink milk. Like recently or as a child? Because as a child, I understand. <laughs> Probably until college. All right. Well, I you was, know what? I learned a lot about health. In college and after college, so yeah. that I'll let slide. But uh-huh. like, if you was like, weird. probably up until like two weeks ago, like I'd be like, "Yo, fam, come on, man." Hold I on. used to just drink cow milk, and it wasn't. I'll never forget it. I was scrolling on Facebook, 
Because the internet will humble you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Same way with the, the ocean. I used to love the ocean. I used to dr swim in it and research it and watch documentaries. Then I, then I learned. So and on Facebook, I, um, I, I was scrolling by um, these pictures, and there was a picture of what looked like a gallon of uh, strawberry Nesquik, mm -hmm. like strawberry milk. And it said, this is what milk looks like when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Then they have to filter out all the blood and yep. the pus and, and the stuff pus, like that. Yep. And yep. I, I, my that life will, changed. That will, that will change a lot. That is so gross. Yeah. yeah. That is so gross. Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, well, what is milk? If you got to filter the blood, the fat, and the, the gross stuff out, like, what, what, are we, what actually are we drinking? And that's when I saw... Uh, a cow being milked, and I, mm. I believe it might be, might have been like a steroid cow. But you know, when you watch cartoons, the milking process it looks cute. You know, they're like, mm -hmm. but then when you see it for real, it's, it's like never a, like that. It's like a muscle, and they have to like, like squeeze it out, and it just and it squirts out. Not like the milk you see. It's like a, oh, it's like yogurt or something like that. And they're like, it almost feel it looks painful to the cow. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just put the bucket, boop, 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 and then you yeah. can sip it from there, which is. Also a gross thought, but oh god, the fact that they have to like knead the it's it, it's it looks weird. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like it, and and honestly, it's more delicious than the other milks. But you can't you can't really gross me out from a uh, almond milk because it's like it's, it came from an almond. Almond milk. The only thing about almond milk that kind of grosses me out is how it's, is how it separates sometimes. Like like if your uh, refrigerator gets too cold and it freezes, then it thaws out. And then you pour it, it looks like you see the little floaties and the chunks and stuff. You're like, oh, this shit just separated. Like, uh -huh. I feel like a chemist. I got to put this back together. I got to give this box a whole, a hard shake to get this milk. Because I don't like seeing the separation of the milk. I don't I don't know why. I just Separating anything is yeah, weird. And it, you have to stir it together uh, and then it drink ruins, it. Like, it. It ruins the, I don't the, like the it. mystery for you. Oh. Cause like the, the the ignorance is bliss when it comes to things like almond milk. We don't really understand how they squeeze milk from an almond, but we're like, all right, it's healthier than I cow's milk. I was just about to ask uh, you. I'm gonna go with this, but then when you start seeing the the, the separation, and then you see it, it looks more cloudy <laughs> over here, and it's like you be like, ah, oh, I don't want, don't ruin this for me, don't ruin this for me. Wait, the word, what? what? Almond milk has a lot of stuff in it, bro. To like get it to what it is, it's a lot of stuff. That's why people be like trying to go hard for like moo milk. I like moo milk. I'm gonna keep calling it moo milk. What is that? Cow's milk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of stuff goes into almond milk, bro. I just, I just learned how almond milk was made. I did not, I did not know this. You basically soak them in water. It yeah. says the general production method. Involves soaking and grinding almonds in an excess of water. Yeah. A milky white liquid is obtained after filtering the almond pulp, which is the flesh. Mm -hmm. Almond milk can also be made by adding water to almond butter. Mm. See? I didn't know that about almond butter. I, All of that is not as gross. It's one, it's one comic. Uh, Owen milk. Wilson, a uh, black comic, very funny guy. He uh, was in a, this, we were in a, the comedy union's office one time talking to the owner. And he was telling me how he makes his own almond milk, like uses a strainer. It's a bag that he uses to like soak it. And then he puts it and what? squeezes the liquid off of it and it strains it or something like. But yeah, he made his own his own almond milk and he learned how to do it because he wanted to teach his kid uh -huh. how to do it as well. And I was like, what? Yeah, the pulp. And I was just like, I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. So I'm. But like I, I feel I like the one that they give in the store got some extra stuff in it though, because it'd be yeah, like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'll pay the four. Yeah, <laughs> I'll pay the four. A nut bag, to... thank you, hippie. It is called a nut bag. That's oh that's wow, really what it's called. Wow. Yes, that's the actual term. <laughs> How do you explain that? Yeah. When somebody walks in and sees a hanging bag filled with white liquid, and you're like, oh, that's just my nut that's bag. My nut bag right there. <laughs> Excuse me, my nut bag. I collect a. Well, you, you know. don't, you don't, you don't have a nut bag. Like, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't generally need, uh, man, everybody should have a nut bag. Even if you know what almond milk is, you should probably leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrifying. Yeah, I make my own nut bag too. I make my own milk. Yeah, you don't make your own milk, you don't just squeeze that out. <laughs> I don't like that. So then, now I don't know what oat milk is, because it seems like everybody in the, in the comments is a fan of the oat milk. Mm. Is it yeah. the same thing? Just soaking? I have no idea. I never looked up oat milk because I don't really partake in it much. You don't that's like not, it? That's just not my thing, man. The almond milk took me a while to get on. Yeah. And once I got that, I was just like, yeah, all right, this is where I'm going to die. I'm not, 
I'm not venturing out to oat milk and it's another one too. Um, is it coconut milk or something? Like, yeah, I don't do the coconut soy. milk. And all. Soy, soy milk. milk. Nah, I'm not doing all that shit. Is soy good for you or not? Because I feel like soy had a huge run, and then all of a sudden, one scientist was like, soy is terrible for you, and yeah. then everybody jumped off. I, I I think that too much soy is definitely not good for you, is what okay. I heard more recently. Um, but I can't tell you why. I do know that it has, like, something to do, I think I read, with, like, giving men movies or something like that if you have too much of it. Mo like man boobs? Yeah. Oh. Soy? Too much soy. I don't know what property the is deceit. in it that causes that, but yeah. The deceit. The hormones in it. Maybe it's the hormones in it. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I don't know if it's that, but I just like, you know, I, I got these on my own. I'm right. not finna be, you know, digesting something that's just gonna give me more estrogen and more titties. Like, I ain't trying to have them things thinking, even <laughs> if I'm working out. It's just like, <laughs> I, be fooling, I be filling out tank tops as it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that shit to look like I'm out here trying to do it. Pea so. protein milk. Oh, there's there's just a whole bunch of them. Rice milk? Cashew milk. Oh, okay. Sherry says soy is bad for those who are high risk for breast cancer. Are you now not when I when I hear that like those are high risk for those that are high risk for breast cancer, is that is that mean like, you know, black women in general or, or people that haven't run in their family already? Like, cause I feel like everybody's at risk for cancer. Like cancer. Cancer is just at a bingo hall playing lottery. It's just turning the ball. Cancer be just it, it, finding yeah. a way in. It does. Like you, you won't, you won't have any history of it in your family, and then you'll pop up with it, and you know, niece or somebody. And I just like, I, I don't like it, man. I remember I, that learning that sunlight caused cancer. And then learning that starlight could cause cancer. And I'm like, that's just outside at this point. Hold on, starlight can cause cancer? I heard that as a kid, but let me let me double check. Hold on. Yeah, you're gonna have to pull that one up. Mm. Does starlight cause cancer? All right, well, they're mostly forums, so maybe these are people that heard the same just like me. But how I mean, like do stars really omit that much light? I have that no they could idea. I have no idea. I, I literally heard that as a kid. And as I said it, I was like, you know, adult me has some, <laughs> has some questions. Uh, <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> Answers from doctors. Doctors, does Starlight give you cancer? No. <laughs> okay. There you go. I am not aware of any Pretty reason. much sums it up, my boy. <laughs> oh, wait, what? To think that spicy corn chips can give you cancer. Oh, that no is the answer to Kentucky's give you cancer. Mm. <laughs> okay. Which was the top answer when somebody said, "Does Starlight give you cancer?" I don't yeah. know. I don't know what that is, but uh, that's, that's. But I mean, good luck for people who like Takis. Uh, we did not find an answer to the Starlight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, go ahead and say no. That's a. It's, it's, it's. Listen, man. It's a crazy time to be alive. What a time to be alive, man. I think about that a lot. Like, could you have made it in the I world so. like a hundred years ago? Could you have made it in the world sixty years ago with G without GPS? No, G bro. Like something as simple. I remember being in college and traveling from St. Louis to Atlanta and having to having to print out MapQuest directions. That was trash. Pulling over on the side of the road, turn, turning the dome light on, looking like all right. That was just exit one sixty three. So this right. should be one sixty four up here. But I need to make sure I take one sixty four B. And we were trash at that. Bro, we had we had the printouts. It's not as convenient as the GPS, but like, I was trash when I had um, the directions on papers. I just I, I don't I, I could not. Like imagine back in the day, like getting on a horse and being like, all right, find uh, Washington, <laughs> 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 go to New Orleans, and you're just like. <laughs> With a ladder. You got a ladder and you got a map. You're not even like a real map. This is just landmarks. And it clicks. It's like That's 13 trash. clicks north. It's That's like, trash. I forgot about that. I can't even that. imagine, bro. Like, like, they didn't have electricity either. Time changes so fast. Technology changes so fast. Like the fact that we do everything. Just about, we're filming. We always film on, on, on iPhones. Always. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. technology is there. Right. Like just think about when you used to go to your, your grandma's house and she had photo albums. Like you go to anybody 30, 30, between 25 and 45, they more than likely don't have photo albums. Damn, that's true. We take all... everything on our phone, which is crazy, but also what? cool because you have a company like Paint Your Life where you could take 
different photos. Let's say you get, you want to get four people in one in one portrait. Uh -huh. You could take all four of those photos. Yep. And send them in, and they could pull those four people out and make one portrait. And it's like a it's like a Titanic painting. Yeah, dude. You like need, this is you be thinking you needed like like uh, to be a billionaire with a private painter to get that. But, but you, you don't. don't. You don't but have you to. Don't. I remember when I first heard about Paint Your Life, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, this is going to be dumb expensive. Uh -huh. Hella wrong. Uh, and the dopest thing is that you get a professional hand painted portrait. Okay. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that uh, just somebody be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could draw, I can paint. No, this, this is a boss, professional. Bob Ross level. Yeah. You get a professional hand painted portrait uh, created from any photo. Uh, it's truly affordable price. Mm -hmm. And you get to choose from a team of world class artists and work with them until every detail is perfect. They're not mm -hmm. going to hand it off. All right. From this point on, Chuck is going to take care of you. No, they're with you from beginning Chuck. to end. Uh, it's user friendly platform, lets you custom. Um, design or you know request anything for that that portrait and <clears throat> it's a quick and easy process and you get a hand painted portrait mm -hmm. in about three weeks um this is perfect for holidays birthdays just cuz gifts anniversaries it does not matter mm -hmm. man it is something that's meaningful personal and be and can be cherished forever and this is something that's good for people of all walks of life you can mm -hmm. get this for your significant other you can get this for uh siblings you can get this for your your parents or your mm -hmm. grandparents okay, it's a great way to bring people together in this time where we feel so separated because of what's going on on the outside things that we cannot control this mm -hmm. is definitely one thing that you can control so Absolutely. i really encourage you guys to take a look at this check mm -hmm. into because it, it is a dope gift. I love our, our portrait that we got for Paint Your Life. Mm -hmm. I know Pat loves it. That's uh, the best thing in my family. house. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, <laughs> man. So um, right now, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 at paintyourlife.com, uh, there is no risk, okay? If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. You can get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off your painting and Free shipping. To get this special offer, text the word INTERNET, I-N-T-E-R-N-E-T, -E -E to 64000. Again, text the word INTERNET to 64000. That's INTERNET to 64000. Text INTERNET to 64000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Okay? Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Don't miss out on this. I'm going to tell you all one more time. Text INTERNET. To sixty four thousand, and you will be super pleased with what you get. I promise you that. Shout out to all the people who uh, already did it too. Yeah, I see that uh, Muscle Russell said that uh, they got their mom a paint your life for her birthday. That's what's up. That's what's up. And listen, man, I, I listen. Shout out to everybody that does take advantage of these ads because one, it keeps the podcast going. <laughs> Two, it keeps. Uh, companies like Paint Your Life coming back to us because mm -hmm. they see that you guys are receptive to it, you are listening to it. And shout out to you for actually trusting us because we don't really, we turn down a lot of stuff too, guys. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of companies that hit us up. We really only rock with the companies that we try. We're like, oh yeah, we think our people are like, like this. That, so yeah. we appreciate you guys trusting us on this and, and listening to us and then taking our advice. So appreciate that. You feel? Y'all are the bee's knees. You know what I'm talking about? Best oh. things to slice bread. I don't know where. Either of the hey, did you know that um, what's her name? Betty White is literally older than sliced bread. I read that. What? Like she remembers when it dropped. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Betty was five years old, um, and it was first sold in 1928. Bread slicers were considered a modern luxury at the time. Bread slicers changed the baking game and even led to the coining of the ever popular idiom, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. That Crazy is, to think that Betty was alive before that pun was conceived. <laughs> that just lets me know that Betty has been She's privy immortal. to white privilege her whole life. Because <laughs> if that was considered modern and like a sign of wealth, that just lets me know she been living that life. <laughs> I'm just kidding though. Shout out to Betty White. She's amazing. That's dope. Uh, but that is crazy to think that someone was alive before a pun happened or uh It was a commercial a bread slicing happened. machine. And she remembers when it dropped. Niggas just were buying whole loaves yeah. and doing it themselves. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Because I hate buying a whole loaf. Like when you get the Italian, they mm -hmm. just give you the full yeah. bread. I'm not going to use it. Like, I just know I'm not going to use it. This? I'm not eating this much <laughs> pasta, my man. Cut this in half for your boy. Remember, I rem I don't remember them, but I remember seeing like the old refrigerators when you used to like, it was just an icebox. Mm -hmm. like you used to have ice in there to help keep everything else cold. 
when milk used to get dry. Oh, is that what icebox meant? Yeah. Wait, so the that kept everything else cold. Yeah, I there's a big block of ice in there. You, you set it near the ice, oh, and it's just like one thing. Oh, I thought that that's where you got your ice, though. Nah, man. That's like just, the, to preserve dang. stuff back in the we've come so far. That's what I'm saying. Like, we don't realize how far we've come in technology. Like, the whole reason they put salt on stuff is to preserve it. Like, uh-huh. like with meat and stuff right. like that. But, like, now we have freezers. We can freeze it. But, like, dog, like, they used to, like, put salt on everything. To say, I, yeah. I couldn't imagine. How yeah, trash I, I got the, the, li- the little high blood pressure that I have now. I would have been dead back in the day. Yeah, trying to before, eat some old meat. <laughs> that's crazy. Before fridges, they just salted the shit yeah, out of Yeah, this is a keep it. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting, but it's not rotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's crazy. You won't crazy. get salmonella and scurvy together. <laughs> What's that cause? Polio. <laughs> Don't we cure <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> what? Dirty white. Jesus, man, that's so crazy. Man. This is cool. This they did a um <laughs> Yeah. They did they did a whole list on other things that Betty White is older than. The microwave. She remembers when the microwave was dropped. That's crazy. Uh, electric razor. Okay, these make the trampoline. <laughs> she remembers when the tramp she was 12. Uh the ballpoint pen. Instant coffee. The garage. <laughs> that should be a show. I don't know if they are. I'm sure somebody's already working on it. Things Betty White saw happen. Like something like that. And she just talks about these things. Because I'm sure so many. Can you what? imagine when she like. When they, first of all. <laughs> when we went from like. Being able to call people just in your Whoa. city. To we got long distance calling. To right. from the rotary phone. To the push button phone. Right. From the push button phone. To the cordless phone. From the cordless phone to the big ass. But if you weren't um, alive for that, it, it sounds ridiculous to a kid. Like you yeah. guys, you guys had to stand next to the wall to use the phone. Why? Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn. She remembers uh-huh. the traffic signal dropping. What was before that? Stop signs everywhere. Stop signs, and you know there used to be the guy out there. And they, they used to be the guy out there, and the, tra- the traffic signs just there was no yellow at first. It was just red uh-huh. and green at one time. Somebody was like, oh, yo, we should probably give going. them a little warning before right. just going to a whole <laughs> 40 stop. miles an hour. <laughs> like, damn, I was going 80. <laughs> <laughs> the garage, though. Sunglasses. <laughs> That's hilarious. Somebody showed up like you, and they were like, yo, <laughs> what is that? What is that? Oh, well, this these, guy looks cool as hell. Can things? you see? Yeah, I can see. It actually <laughs> helps me see, especially when I'm driving. TV dinners? Rubber tires. Wait, that one I, ne- I need to understand because I she thought tires a, were always rubber. She was a legal adult, 18 years old, when rubber tires dropped. It said uh, uh, rubber protection was more poli- – what was – what? yeah, what was before? It was iron tires? What was before rubber tires? I know they're not saying, like, the wooden tire, <laughs> wooden wheels on stage for right? <laughs> When was the first Model T invented? <laughs> uh, my, my Model T Ford. We were, I need to know this now. <laughs> the iron ones, though. I don't know. It says uh, material rubber. Okay. Okay, so Ford Motor Company started in 1903. And she was born in, what, 1928? So, yeah, these yeah. were out. So Steel. I don't know what they were using before. It says the earliest tires were bands of leather, then iron, Placed on wooden wheels. And then uh, the first patent for, let me scan. This is a lot of information, sorry. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I feel like this is going to require some studying. Yeah, I'm typing in, what did Ford cars cars use for tires? Uh, Ford used clincher tires on the Model T Ford. From the first 1909 passenger car built in the fall of 1908. Uh, what is a clincher tire? Uh, there's a lot to know about. Let me, let me look oh, up clincher. Shout out to the airless tire that just dropped. Oh, yeah. The, the airless and, oh, you talking about that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about like it's kinda run cool. flats. Clincher tires. Uh, it clinches to the rim of the wheel with a bead of hard rubber, like a car tire, a clincher has an open button. I don't know. That's what I just 
Yeah, it, it decided. Looked, so this looks <laughs> like this was like there was the rim, and then there was something that like pinched it, and then whatever that pinched it was hard enough to keep it shake, and then that was wrapped in either rubber or leather, and that I, was a clincher tire. I just don't know what things were before. That's crazy. Before. <laughs> Like that's insanity. She ah, is old. Yeah. <laughs> she is old. She you know what's crazy is that trampoline commercials. A lot of these these new cars, especially like luxury cars like BMWs and Mercedes and things like that, they uh -huh. don't come with uh, spare tires now. I feel like I've talked about this before. They they the newer cars. Yeah, they have what they call run flat tires. So those tires you can usually get between forty, I think forty and eighty miles on the, the most expensive ones. Uh -huh. Forty and eighty miles travel on a flat tire. So the tire can be flat, but you'll get like, you know, an extra 40, 80 miles right. to get off the highway or they're meant to be towed though. They don't come with spare tires. It's crazy as fuck. You Damn. pay you pay ninety thousand, hundred, ten thousand dollars to a car and you don't even get you a spare tire. You get the spare, you you asked out if you if that expensive car breaks down or gets a flat. Or you better have AAA. Yeah, I feel like everybody at this point has AAA, and they've gotten faster. I remember, yet, bro. I remember like taking naps, waiting for AAA, and then nowadays it's like there's they're, they're immediately Let like me tell you something. <laughs> I I think I told you when I ran out of gas in the old on the Focus, I had the Focus. I ran out of gas on a 101 and fucking rush hour. Like on the side, or you were in the? I like was the, in the. Second to last lane. I but mean, you, uh, when it broke down, were you in the freeway? Or did I you was get to in pull the over? freeway. You didn't get to pull over. The car ran out of gas. I'm driving, Damn. and I hear. <laughs> I don't know what that's like. Oh. like Death, where, scary. Okay, so if this was E, if this was uh -huh. the E thing, were you below it? No. So what happened was, remember? I think, I, yeah, I think I told this. The the gas hand and the digital dash uh -huh. were not displaying the same thing. They were showing different things. Oh, so the thing was broken. Yeah, it was broken. Oh, so okay. the, the hand said I had almost a quarter of a tank. The digital one said I still had 15 miles there. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make it to the gas station. Right. Dog, that joint died on your boy. Let me tell you something. Yeesh. 101? <laughs> on the 101 South. What do you I'm even like, do? Do you get out? <laughs> no, I called AAA. I told them where I was at. I told them what, what exit I had just passed. Mm -hmm. um, what time was it? Oh, you said bro, rush hour. Okay. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. 4.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shit. 4.30, cars zipping by on the other, and the, 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 the other two lanes on the right zipping by. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the right-hand side, because this is right before the highway splits between the 101 and the 134. Mm -hmm. So oh. the traffic is starting to build up. Yeah, yeah. And tensions amount. People driving by. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, bro, nobody plans. <laughs> I'm not just parking. <laughs> yo, I have to make a phone call. Like, they people, are so who, mad. And I get mad? it. Because I've been there. I've been like, yo, what the fuck? Who runs out of gas right this? here? <laughs> Me, nigga. I run out of gas right here, yo. So embarrassed. I just was like, I How don't want to die. They, they were there in about 10 minutes, 10, 12 oh, minutes. Okay. Here's a crazy shit. This is how I knew something was wrong with the car outside of the obvious. Got to the gas station, car started right up. I knew I had gas left. I knew I had gas left. I don't know if it was, if it, this is like, you know, they, they had that, that meter in there, that reader sometimes, and that's what is supposed to float on top of the gas and yeah. tell you how much gas you have left. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. I don't know if it like, when they tilted it to put it on the back of the flatbed, uh -huh. it gas got somewhere and it was able to jump. I don't know, bro, but it started right up when I got to the gas station before I even put gas in it. I hadn't even put gas in it. That bitch started. I was like, yo, you just wanted to embarrass the real did it? Did they tell you there? Yeah, they still told me there. <laughs> That's trash. Bro. It was just like, oh, you just wanted, oh, to, embar you just God, wanted to embarrass yo. me. Yeah. People, people were just so mad at me. And I got it because I've been there. It's a long 10 minutes. It's too. a long 10 minutes. I'm causing the traffic jam before the traffic jam. Oh, so wait, what's God. worse? That like breaking down in the in in the middle of traffic or in the middle of nowhere? Nigga, no, I take traffic is worse for me. Safer. It's safer. Well, I mean, depending <laughs> on where the nowhere is. If you break down on the middle of nowhere, like on the way to Vegas, I feel like there's enough traffic there that mm -hmm. sooner or later somebody's gonna come. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. if you got AAA, you you good. It might be a little boring, but it's like fuck it, I get a nap in, right? Yeah. But if you break down in the middle of nowhere at night, mm. like in between, like like coming from Vegas and Barstow, where it's like nothing, now that that might be a little scary. Fam, it's a little scary. And terrifying. that jail's right out there. It's a jail right out there on the way to Vegas. I see that jail every time. I know a couple of people there too. I, One of the dudes went to. Uh, he's from out here, mm -hmm. but he went to college with me in St. Louis. Yeah. I know he's in that jail. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Like, like you, you, you remember when he went to jail? Or you're just assuming. No, I know he's in that jail. I remember oh, okay. when he went out there. He had moved out here and got in trouble. 
Oh yikes! Yeah, he got in trouble back in St. Louis too, stealing some shit from some some. Of his, he was an alpha. And he stole some shit from one of his alpha brothers. Uh oh! And caught that nigga. Okay. Mm, they called the police or they beat that nigga there. I <laughs> can either confirm or deny. Hey, those allegations. Greeks, tell you off Greeks of, be real niggas. Like I will tell you off of camera. You see them niggas uh spinning the cane, mm. and then you hear about all the niggas that got beat up with said cane. <laughs> they don't play about that shit. Man, listen. <laughs> they do not play about that shit. But that I, shit was crazy. I remember uh I don't remember where I was coming back from. I think it was like Joshua Tree or something, and I hit some corner and my t- my tire hit the curb. I don't know. I, I don't usually be driving like that. But my my uh my tire like almost came off on one of those like those dirt roads that be in between cities Mm -hmm. but it was like pitch black and it wasn't that late it was like eight or nine but it was so dark because there was no lights that every truck that passed if they just went off a little bit they they'll it'll kill you yes so it's like they you know they they say they're just supposed to park and then get out of the car and walk away mm-hmm. but the nigga took so long he, he took like an hour because it was like where was i i didn't know what to say i was like i mean there's a i, I see a tree <laughs> listen that's why I mean, trash. i'm so thankful for where we are in technology right now because yes. like now something happens like you connect with AAA, and then mm-hmm. the tow truck calls you be like yo you got an iphone i can drop you my location Right, like that's the that's one of the best things about that right now. But right. man, prior to, like, yeah, bro, I'm I'm right by the sign. After you pass exit 142, right. mile marker 113, but I'm not quite to. It's, it's a lot, man. You gotta walk to even get. Oh man, my just, god, that was horrifying. That was scary as heck. Jeez, Louise, man, not fun. Not fun at all, man. Not, not fun, fun at all. At all. But I mean, like, listen, like I said, you can get a little nap in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get a little nap in, get to relax a little bit. Somebody like me, when I feel like I can't do anything, that's when I'm most inclined to take advantage of, like, binging on a series or something like that. Right. But, I mean, lately I've been watching everything. So now if I have free time, I can't watch nothing else. But I'm not tripping because that's a, it's a good opportunity for me to go ahead and jump on this Young Best Fiends. You know what I'm saying? This mm-hmm. is an amazing game. Y'all already know about it. Oh, yeah. It's free to play. You understand me? Free. I mean, not free to play. It's free to download. Mm-hmm. You understand me? I hop on that Young Best Fiends. Cause it's free to download. You understand? It's the, it's the typical match three casual mobile puzzle game, man. I cannot put it down. You yes. understand me? I love it. This is a game that's proved Obsession. itself time and time again mm-hmm. over 100 million downloads. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of. That's a lot it's of a downloads. Lot, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of downloads. It's super casual. You ain't gotta like get dressed to play this. You can just whip your phone out. You waiting on triple ice? You don't okay. Get dressed. Yeah. I, in some games you feel like you gotta do a lot for. I, I gotta. <laughs> I gotta do <laughs> my finger crunches to make sure I can. Nah, man. This is super casual. Have fun playing it, man. We're waiting for triple A. Go ahead and play it, man. Um. I, I, I don't, I guess, as I said, I, I don't get to play it as often as I would like to. Mm-hmm. So people be hitting us up talking about what level they on and all. Hey, man, mind your business. Mm-hmm. All right? Mind your business. I'm doing the best that I can over here. All right? Uh, Best Fiend has thousands of levels plus new content added all the time. So mm-hmm. you never run out of entertainment, unlike Netflix. Okay? Um, these days, I can't keep my favorite game with me all the time. And I'm talking about Best Fiend. So it's the top rated mobile puzzle adventure game. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying to you? Top, top. Top, top. Top, You don't have to be a hardcore gamer to love this casual game. It's Mm -hmm. made for adults, but fun for all. Uh, Unless you hate fun. Okay, and in that case, then we have another problem. We probably need to talk about that separately. Yeah, this ain't for you if you don't like fun. Yeah, this ain't for you. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Again, um, y'all hit us up and y'all tell us what levels y'all are on. We appreciate it, but also like mind your business because we doing the best that we can. Um, with Best Fiends, there's something new every day, today and tomorrow mm-hmm. and the day after that. Literally thousands of levels to play and counting plus tons of cute characters to collect. So Shout if you never get tired of solving puzzles, mm-hmm. good news. With Best Fiends, the fun never ends. All right? yep. Boredom doesn't stand a chance. You understand me? Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's Best Friends without the R. Best Fiends. Best Get fiends. it now. You feel me? Fiends. Shout yeah, out to Sydney the Spider, my homie. We've been through war together. We've been through war together. <clears throat> Back to food. This is, uh, this is something uh, I was trying to ask you and Dom at the time, but I couldn't get it out because mm-hmm. Dom doesn't like sandwiches. Sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a rumor, or, or there's been like a, a myth, 
that's like, why, why do these sandwiches taste better when someone else makes them for me? But because they actually do. It's super weird. Sandwiches actually taste better when they're made by someone else because when you make your own, you anticipate its taste as you're building it, which makes you less hungry for it. I, I know everybody you know who cooks says the same thing. They'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking all the, in the kitchen, and then when, by the time they make it, they're not really hungry or their appetite isn't gone or they, were, you know, they think they're maybe eating a little bit as they, as they go. But a lot of time, it's really the, the science in your body anticipating the taste. Mm -hmm. So then by the time it's a finished product, if you come in from another room and you weren't involved in the process, it's 100% new and it actually tastes better. But if you've been building it, it's, it, it'll probably still be fire, but mm -hmm. that's, there's actually a reason behind why we think that. It's pretty cool. Here's the thing, though. Here's, here's my only question about that. I guess if you've had it before, like uh -huh. that person has made you a sandwich before or the uh -huh. shop has made you a sandwich before, then you can anticipate it. But if somebody new just says, all right, I'll make you something, I'll make you a sandwich real quick. Uh -huh. Like... Can you anticipate it being just as good? Because this is gonna be your first time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Now, like, like today I had uh, Mike's Deli, and th this is my second time having Mike's Deli. Okay. And that sandwich was just as good as I anticipated it was from the first time. I mean, they pound. I mean, just load the meat. But you on didn't that make board. it. Though, right? I didn't make it. Yeah. yeah. They load the boar's head up. They give you the, the Swiss and the cheddar <laughs> and the the mayo and the deli mustard, and it was exactly as good as it was the first time, if not better. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful that I, I feel like I have maybe four or five more times before the law of diminishing return kicks in, right? Huh. Um, but that happens. It doesn't matter how good something is. The law of diminishing return will happen unless you space it, you space it out. You got to space that thing out. You know what I'm saying? If you have it every day, not every day, <clears throat> not even every day. If you have it once a week for, uh, <laughs> once a week for, Five weeks straight. Mm -hmm. I think maybe around that fourth week it starts to kick in and law. Really? Yeah, I think so, man. Four weeks though? Because here's the thing, like the first I feel like the first two to three times you try it, you're still like exploring with the the taste. You're like, oh man, I didn't even realize this bacon was slapping like this or something like that. Yeah. I think around that fourth time it starts to settle in and then the fifth time he was like, huh, it was okay. I mean it hit the spider. It, it did what it was supposed to do. Right. It did what it was supposed to do. It's like mac and cheese with me. Like once I find somebody that makes good mac and cheese, it's usually around that fourth or fifth time. Like, okay, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, you it'll kind of yeah, the law of diminishing return. That's what it is. Every time you have it, it satisfies you a little less mm -hmm. each time, right? That's dang. That makes a lot of sense because a lot of my favorite foods kind of trickled out. From, yeah, from it fizzled over, out from overuse. Now, there's one thing <laughs> that fizzles out after the first time, and that's heroin. I heard that you would never it. get I mean, that, that same high after that first oh, high. That's what you meant. <laughs> I was like, I would assume it gets better. <laughs> no, that's why that thing, like crack and heroin is like they always chasing that, that, that purple that dragon high. or magic yeah. dragon. Is that what that means? Mm -hmm. They always chasing that first high and never, right. ever comes back. So. Which is the opposite with weed because usually your first high is horrifying. Oh, man. Terrible. It was, yeah, it was, it was really bad. <laughs> and really scary. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, do you think. What do you think the art of making a sandwich is? Like if you and someone else got the same ingredients for a sandwich, do you think that one of them, one of the sandwiches can be better and, you know what I mean? Like you think there's an art Absolutely. to it? Absolutely, I do. What do you think makes a bad sandwich though? I think Improper putting, stacking? In, I think improper stacking and spreading. Like you got to spread the flavor out. Like if I'm going to put mayo on it, I'm not going to put mayo and mustard right on top of each other. I will put a, a layer of mayo and then put the lettuce and then I would put maybe the the um, the pickles, and then I would put maybe another layer of lettuce or, or cheese. But I would separate it so it's not like not every bite, not every level has the the liquid on that because you want to spread those flavor out. Like I would spread the the pickles and the the, the mustard, yeah, a far kind of far away from each other. Okay. So like when I bite in it, I every. Every flavor hits me like mmm, mayo, mmm, pickles, mmm, boar's head, turkey, mmm, pit, oh, the mustard, deli That's mustard. True, oh, yeah. You, so, like, if you don't care, you just like mayo, mustard, pickles, uh -huh. cheese, meat, lettuce, bread. Right. First of all, we need we need layering on both sides of those breads. All right. So, top bread, Some bottom bread, stuff. need to have something. You need to have <laughs> mustard here, mayo here, and then fill it in with a little flavor there. But you don't be don't put no dry bread together for my sandwich. Both of my breads need to be lubricated. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I got to learn this. 
Because I like my sandwiches, but I feel like there's an art to it. Because you, you think that it's the same ingredients, just put it together and it, and it tastes the same. But like, even with like burritos and wraps, like mm-hmm. when it's when it's like assembled the same way, it's like the bites are different. So yeah, I I if I'm ordering at Chipotle mm-hmm. and I got a couple people behind me, I mean not like a crazy line. If it's six people behind me, they just gonna have to wait. But if it's just like one or two people, I let them go ahead of me because I want them to make my bowl how I want them to make my bowl. What does it take a minute? It, I mean, I'm I'm kind of particular with it. Like like what kind of beans or rice do you want? I'm like well, first of all, I want brown rice. Put the rice down first. Okay, and then get my beans. Now, I don't want too much juice off my beans, okay? I'm not going to get the juice from the beans and keep it that. That's just going to make that bowl soggy, baby girl. So I need you to tap that spoon a couple times before you put them beans in. All right, <laughs> boom. There we go. Okay, now cool. All right, now now before my sofritas or, or, or the chicken, I want you to put the fajita veggies down, okay? Put them down first. They're going to they get, get them in there. Then put the meat on top of it, all right? Now, when you, when you sprinkle my cheese, I don't want you just like, boom, right along the middle. I, I want cheese in every bite, so I want you to, <laughs> I want you to layer that bad boy, dress it, you know, side to side. I want you to, you know what I'm saying? I want you to fill it on up like you coloring in an S. That's how I want you to lay in my chin. God. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about it. Do bro. they roll their eyes when you come in? I, but they get it though. They get, I'm like, yo, you gotta, you gotta make it the way that you want it, dog. You got. That's funny. Here's a, here's another trick. This, this this gonna fuck y'all up. This gonna fuck y'all up, but. <laughs> if you have time and you fuck and the people at the um the Chipotle really fuck with you, do this. Get them to make you uh basically it's a it's a gordita crunch burrito, right? So you um you get the tortilla uh-huh. and you put the cheese all over it like they're finna make a quesadilla, right? Oh, the quesadilla. Quesadilla. So yep. but you put the other tortilla on top of it. It's this one big flat thing. Yeah. Have them press that, right? And when they kill that off of there, that's what they make your burrito with. It's now fire. you got the all oh, However, they don't, know, they don't, they don't, not everybody knows how to make those though. Yeah, you because gotta, that, you gotta take, you since, take the time to Since it. they press it, um, sometimes, have you ever had somebody roll it, but the, uh, the tortilla was weak, mm-hmm. so they kind of gave you like, like cuts in it and yep. stuff like that? Yeah. That's the only thing. But when they, when they, when they have like a connoisseur working Oh, there, who loves it? And you looking at them like, you, you gon you, you gonna make it in I, in I don't business. know how I can tip you, but just take this 10, <laughs> I'll turn my back, if it disappears, it disappears. <laughs> I'm not judging you for that. I just want you to know I appreciate your artistry. That shit is important though. Like yeah. when you go to Subway and somebody's like really good at it, you just like, man, thank you. You didn't have to do it. You yeah. didn't have to make it like that. Bro, when my pizzas be coming and they be like exactly how I want them to, like from Domino's or Pizza Hut, like, cause sometimes you could tell they just sloppily did it. Like you got that one slice that's right. this, it's like a sliver. You be like, yeah, they cut my pizzas too fast. That's how I know the shit was made with love. When all the pieces, <laughs> are equal and the pepperoni is visible but it's still held down by the cheese on that deep di- bruh you I do about- like when the cheese covers the pepperoni a little yeah, bit. I, you get the best fucking review I'll take my time with it I spell check it I read <laughs> over it for- I will take it out of Yelp put it in my notes to read over it <laughs> I change everything, then put it back into Yelp, and then hit send. And I take pictures. You get good fucking reviews from me. When I'm you glad do that people like that do. exist. It seems like Yelp only exists for people who have bad experiences no. to go talk shit. When it's good, I I, I give you your props, baby. <laughs> I give you goddamn props when it's good. You understand me? That's tight. I'm for sure getting a sandwich after this. <laughs> oh man, I wish you can go to the mics, man. That's just so good. Man, they talking about Scooby Doo sandwiches in the comments. Scooby Doo had some delicious looking sandwiches in. Oh there. man, their food hit different on. Like, like, I don't know why cartoon food don't look like it slapped like that, but <laughs> Scooby Doo was eating. <laughs> Man, them sandwiches he be making and running with it, then he smash it all together, throw it in his mouth. Him and Shaggy. He never were, chewed either. He just swallowed it whole. I was like, yo. He and Shaggy were quite fake. You out here wilding out, man. Y'all wilding, my boy. As an adult. <laughs> um, <laughs> graham crackers. You like graham crackers? It's all right. Not a, not a graham cracker connoisseur. I actually recently had uh, Golden Grahams, the cereal. Mm-hmm. Trash. So oh, you like it? Oh, God. I used to love Golden Grahams. That shit tastes like cardboard now. But um, interesting origin story. Reverend Sylvester Graham. <laughs> That's the dude who made it. Reverend Sylvest- Sylvester Graham, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is pretty funny that they're graham crackers. Like, uh, He invented the graham cracker as a way to prevent sexual desires. Ah, uh, this is one of those things that's supposed to suppress sexual desires in women back in the day, like cornflakes. You know, cornflakes are supposed to be doing that. Same too. kind of thing. I remember we talked about that. Same kind of thing. I don't think this is specific to women, 
But it said he believed that a person could become physically ill from sex, materialism, gluttony, and above all, masturbation. Uh, Let me he, tell you something. He thought that a bland diet would curb sex drive, so graham crackers. I am always going to jack off. You understand? Not, like no, no amount of graham crackers? Yeah, no amount of graham crackers, no amount of sex. I'm always going to find time to tell myself, hey, you matter. And I'm going I'm to wear one out. I always you wear, gonna your, do it. you wear your you matter hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. it. <laughs> well, I typically light a candle or an incense because I'm worth it. <laughs> I have never lit a candle or an incense to jack off. That's hilarious. That's like forty year old virgin. Hey man, <laughs> I like, matter. No. Okay, I'm. I deserve it. I deserve it. Yeah, <laughs> light that candle, baby boy. That's wild to think mm -hmm. that niggas would eat graham crackers and be like, you know what? No Pornhub today. <laughs> That's would so be, random. Wouldn't be me, Chief. I'm in there. Skip Dang. the skin, 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 like fan and was like, all right, for sure, I'm eating these graham crackers. I'm not jacking off. And then as an old man, it came out like masturbation. You should probably masturbate like two times a week or whatever the the, the thing was that's like once a day, and it and it helps you. Like you missed out on all that jack your whole life. All those, mm -hmm. all that post nut clarity mm -hmm. that be helping. You know, all those all those thirsty moments that you could have avoided. All those, all that just self-care, oh, yeah. being all, bored at the house. All that rubbing one out before you go on a date, you know what I'm saying, with this chick who got on this uh, this this potato sack dre dress, you know what I'm saying, now you got it. Specific. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about back in the days when you used to, you know, hey, I want this woman to be mine and I will trade you 60 sheep for some shit. Like, all of that because you hadn't had sex. You hadn't had sex. You didn't rub one out before you went to go <laughs> meet up. Potato sack dress. I was trying to think, like, is this modern? Oh, no, okay. no, nah, this is old. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. Graham crackers ain't it. That's funny. This nigga prevented them to stop masturbation, and then now they're only bought for s'mores. Posting up clarity is a real thing. I feel like that's not get enough highlight no, in, the, sure. in, the, in the community, okay? Because that shit is serious. Uh, Y'all be out Save here just lives. making weird ass decisions just because you led by your genitals. Think about all the mass shootings that were stopped because the dude just stopped and Man, beat, beat it to Alexis, Texas. Remember the chick that that held the the robber up by giving him some head? He had just robbed the gas station. Yeah, that's crazy. And she was like, "I like the way you hold that pistol, Mister." And I know how long cops yeah. take to get there. <laughs> yeah, so, she, so was, she she was just going to work. <laughs> you hear a door? No, right. no, no. I didn't okay, so keep going. <laughs> Anybody? No, still, still nobody here. All right. Cops uh, came in. Hour like, two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want me to let you finish? So I was like, I was just waiting till y'all got here. Is Shit. This, is this place ro being robbed or <laughs> is this the right place? Is this the right gas station? Shit. You know how tired I am? <laughs> I better get water for free in this motherfucker forever. You know? She didn't even work there. She was just a, I know. a, a, she was a helping just hand. Guy. She was just another. Superheroes. <laughs> the, uh, the, not all heroes wear capes. Yeah. Pornhub. Yeah. Porn stars are. are Saving lives out here. You know how many creeps are out there? Like, you know, watching Alexis, Texas instead of out there, you know, underneath the freeway mm -hmm. looking for a weird time. A weird time? Looking for a weird <laughs> time. <laughs> I've, 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 I've done the do before dates and mm -hmm. while talking to people I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure about. And then, you know, afterwards you're just like, all right, well, I know where we stand. Yeah. And fellas, if you out there, if you still dating during the pandemic, if you're taking that risk, mm -hmm. fine. Okay, just 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 do it safely. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you know what the end goal is. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and and just because it's still winter is no reason for you to, as a grown man to have a hibernation bush. Okay, <laughs> you 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 can let it go. You out here with one to three inches of hibernation bush. That that is that is unreasonable. You understand me? Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products that make sure you're walking around town with a beautiful pair of snowballs. You understand me? There's a lot of puns all through this read. Y'all just, yeah. just going to have to deal with this, all right? <laughs> Manscaped is here to provide you with the best tools for grooming experience, offering precision engineering tools for your family jewels, all right? Now, I've been a fan of Manscaped for a very long time. I actually got my brother-in-law and two of my nephews 
the Manscaped Perfect Package deal. Nice. All right, this is this. It was amazing. They loved it. It came with the Lawnmower 3.0. Um, Lama 3.0 is a trimmer. So it's the best for hygiene tool mm -hmm. for the modern man because it's ceramic blades and it has the advanced skin safe technology. No more snags on your balls, fellas. No I, more snags. Look, because those little, those little nicks, they hurt. Yeah, that's right there. You're like, oh, shit. And then in the start of you ain't gotta worry about this. All right? no that's what the that's what the advanced skin safe technology is all about. You know what I'm talking about? Uh so they got that. They also got the uh weed whacker, which is the ear and nose trimmer. Um, and it got the performance boxer briefs, and it all came in this like perfect little travel bag. And they loved it. They told me they had been wanting to do it, they just didn't know where to get it. And it's like, bro, you can get this anywhere. Like, like I've been talking about this for over a year now. So I'm glad that they love it. Uh you guys should get it, get it, get this going. You have Hmm? You have ear hair? I trim mine. I really use my weed worker. No, but do you have ear hair? I didn't have ear. You know what? The crazy thing is I would get like one strand right here on the lobe. Not actually inside. What? but what? Just, just one on each side. It's the weirdest thing. For everybody, like, what is with this hair? <laughs> <Elf>? <laughs> That's so Bro. weird. <laughs> and my nose hair just started any. growing unruly like the end any. of last year. I don't have any hairs. That's crazy. Thank you, Manscaped. <laughs> Well, I, I definitely <laughs> use mine, man. And I also use the Crop Preserver, which is like an anti-chafing ball deodorant. It's, fellas, get your, get your balls together is all I'm saying. If you're going to be out here ball dating during the pandemic, it's already, it's already iffy. All ball right? deodorant it's clutch. You shouldn't be bringing more sketch to the table, all right? <laughs> so 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com if you use the code DIYS. Okay. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code DIYS. Thanks to Manscaped for making our winter wieners look so good. Winter wieners. <laughs> winter. I like that. Wieners. Ah, uh, get that 20% off and that free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the promo code DIYS. Nice. I, I think I'm going to go bald this this year. Oh, I've been I've been I've been staying on top of it. I'm going full bald. I'm a 90 year old man like. down there. You know what I'm saying, me? It, 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 you feel like a. I feel free. I don't want to say like a kid. That's weird. Yeah, but but I feel free. <laughs> so she said she said phase before fellatio. Holler. <laughs> phase before fellatio. The fellatio fade. I'm here for it. Yeah, man, y'all got a good like, a lot of especially if you have multiple partners, y'all need to shave that hair because hair holds bacteria. Y'all be out here messing up people's pH because y'all ain't washing yourselves good. So just get rid of the hair. You know you ain't washing yourself good. I I, I didn't you, know how much the the uh, we were the culprits of that. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, you don't even have to have any type of disease mm -mm. to to throw. The, 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 the woman's vagina completely off. We're sorry, so. guys. We you, don't. We don't. We, we need to know these things. If you think you're washing your hair good, that's why. This is why I got rid of my hair. If you think you're washing your hair good, take a shower, clean all the way up, right, and, 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 and then put on some white underwear. And then about an hour, and not doing nothing. Let's say you just sat down for an hour. And about an hour, scratch, just scratch up against your 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 pubic region. I bet you still got a little tan, little little brown, little light brown, little something like that. I guarantee. Yeah. And that's the shit that just be holding on to your hair. Get rid of that shit and watch how your life change for the better. That's super, you're welcome. That is you're welcome. Hor horrifying growth. Hey man, it's real though. Jesus, it's real. I'm out here trying to put y'all on game and shit. Uh, also, ladies. Is 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 fully bald down there weird? I feel like I feel like it's it's weird to the to the to the women now to be just go down there and it's just stomach you know why, stomach to dick. You no. know why it feels weird for me because I'm not in shape. I feel like if I had the the, <laughs> the Angelo v? v and then the abs right to like the that like the pubic region, just like the sidewalk <laughs> to the dick. It's just like the sidewalk. Oh, finna go to dick town. I can't wait to get to pound town and then you see it. But like now it's like a slide down my stomach, like wee. And then like a little stubble on a little pebble region, you're like, oh, it's a dick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look at the dick. <laughs> it's like uh, after street cleaning. <laughs> it's like this is a this sidewalk is usually messy. <laughs> this is a this is a, it's a clean straightaway. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Um, real quick though. Um, while we're on the while we're on the sexual topic, yes, sir. <laughs> did you know we got a bunch of facts today? One single human male produces enough sperm in two weeks to impregnate every fertile woman on the planet. Why? Why? Why do we have this? Is that for 
in case of Armageddon? Because there's some niggas already trying to do this. <laughs> there is literally some niggas that are already trying to do this. But it's like, why? 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 Why do we need? That? I don't. I Every don't woman want, I don't, on the planet. I don't want mine. Y'all can get. Yeah, I agree, Luella. Birth control should have been for men first. All right, because a woman can only get pregnant once at a time. Right? She, you pregnant now? Are right, you gonna be pregnant again for another six to eight months? You know, unless you have a premature baby. Men could get six or seven women pregnant in one week, if not more. And keep if that going. was that goal, and keep moving, man. Give us birth control. Give I'm all for it. Give us the pill. Put us on the shot. I got go ahead and pill. clip. Oh man, I listen. I wish I could have got my shit clipped earlier, but they were like, um, you you have to wait till you get a little older. You know, you might want to wait till you, you get married, see if your spouse wants to have kids. I'm like, I don't want no kids. I don't want no kids. What Fuck a, what if what if the most efficient, like one hundred percent accuracy and success rate, they just had to take your balls off. No, but but like no hormone changes, no voice change, mm -hmm. nothing changed. But you just were like, you know, you didn't need to worry about birth anymore. STDs are still a thing, but yeah, ball you just. Well, no I mean, ball. if STDs are still a thing, then it's just easier just to get your tubes tied for a guy, or get snipped, brother. Not the tubes tied, but get to, get snipped as a guy. All right, what if, what if what if what if STDs were thrown in there? So no balls means we're just no, safe, for, safe for all tag sex. Tag them, safe for all sex. Tag them, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get my, my balls are like my nipples. Like I've never ever had my balls caressed or licked and was like, oh, that was it for me. Oh, my life has changed after that. I just, I never what? once had never, I've had them licked. I've had them touched. I've had them sucked. But I never once in any of those instances has it been like, oh, I've been missing out on life. I, I never, I've never lived until this month. Never. Ever. Same thing with my nipples. Fact get them both us. the fuck out of here. You can take my nipples. I'll keep my balls. Uh, I forgot you can take about my balls. Your balls ball, getting your balls sucked is. I feel like the balls are more for women in every aspect, other except for like producer sperm. Like women like when they you know smack them a little bit right there. They you know they like to fondle them, reach back and grab them from doggy. I, I mean it's like oh I, I appreciate the extra you know curricular activities, but they ain't Dang. really doing. They be in the way. You know what I'm saying? I have to take extra care when I'm down there, like you know, they don't, getting they, them, shaving them and stuff like that. You got to be careful. The maintenance can't, isn't crazy though. You can't just plop. No, nah, nah, listen. If if you want compared be, to a vagina, oh no, nah, not compared to it. It's, it, they be uncomfortable beat. sometimes. Yeah, you, you women have us beat on every yeah. every level. Women have us beat, but they just be all over the place for nothing. You said balls slap. I've never heard that. He said they slap. Oh yeah, when you going from the back? No, I think he meant like they slap. Like, oh, this this food. Oh, slap. somebody said that in the comments. <laughs> Say balls slap. They're to they're dope. They slap. That's Jeff. <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep them. Uh, I mean, take them. I don't gonna, need them. I'm gonna keep them. Shout out to shout out to the women who pay extra close attention to the balls. You know, we don't we don't we don't have, we don't have to tell you guys. You know, that extra like you said, extra curricular. Very yeah. important. Shout out to you. Some guys. people do it. Some people don't. Some people like you got to have a, a a lover who is uh, in tune with that and also speaks your language in in the bedroom, knows what you like. But that that guys that requires you to be vocal about what you like, and what you don't like. You just gonna lay there, you just gonna fuck and just hump and shit like that. She ain't gonna know. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, <laughs> it's like a, when you know a lot of a lot of girls say that uh, when they get uh, fellatio. What's the what's the what's fellatio for? A woman very I don't know. Women just the head. Cunnilingus. Oh, cunnilingus, yeah. And you got a lot of t a lot of women who receive cunnilingus. The man is just kind of like licking the, the hole mm -hmm. instead of the, that's not, that's instead not of the clitoris. How do you not know that, though? Like, why would you lick a, a gaping area? Like, that's it's nothing. You, you got to learn, you you learn, learn the vagina. Yeah, but first of all, you can look at a picture of vagina first. Like, why would you go for the opening? First to lick, like why wouldn't you? Because it's lick called a it place that, licking vagina. I yeah, think the first time I did it, I did that. I always went straight to the, the first time. First time I went. Straight you were to the you clit. were clit trained. I was just. I mean, I didn't. First of all, it took me way long to do it. I didn't. I didn't actually. I was never big on head right. for myself. Like I just never because I, I I don't really. It, it takes so long for me to come from it. I never was big on it. But then when I did <laughs> finally start going down on women and giving them. What is it? Cunnilingus? Cun Cunnilingus. Cunnilingus. Mm -hmm. um, I was already like 24, 25. When, when you first gave head? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. You I did was everything just, earlier than everybody. I was fucking fucking though. Mm. Now when it came to fucking, I was, I was fucking. Yeah. But I wasn't sucking. I wasn't doing that. 
And, and I, I also didn't take a lot of head because I knew how long it took for me to get head and come. So, so you go. didn't get it. That's what you said. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ask for it. I didn't push for it or anything. Like if I felt like they were going their way, like take my buckle off, I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. I flip them over, and I would, you know, go to, go to sex town, go to pound town. But I wouldn't pound like the head thing was. It was like, yo, you gonna be here for 24, a minute. 25. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was. In I didn't start drinking till I was 28. Oh, okay. There's a. There's a. Little pattern with, with the those things, but I was fucking fucking. Mm-hmm. I was fucking. I it's a I lot lost of my... I, a lot of women that I dated in the past miss out with good head because now I love it. I love going there. Oh, a woman Nickelodeon, <laughs> Nickelodeon. <or> <laughs> a woman, a woman took my mouth virginity in in the eighth grade. She ravaged my mouth. Uh, she was holding the head. I like when women hold the head too. Like, I do too. Treat treat me like a, when I'm down there. Treat me like a slut. But I was trying to figure it out. You know, I was I was mm. I was I was new down there. Yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? You don't. Mm, it's somebody's me. first day of school. They don't push them in the classroom and hey, throw man. a textbook at them. Some people some people learn quick. You catch on quick. Slut yeah. me out. I, I I like a quick learning curve. Slut me. Pull my hair up and smack me on my face and shove it back. Get your ass back down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest thing. I don't think I ever told anybody this. The weirdest thing that happened to me during Cunnilingus, I was down there. This mm-hmm. was in this was in the, the college days, and uh, she was a little smaller. You know, she was of the uh, of the uh, a- Asian descent, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I, no one's ever done this before or after. But she like when she got into it, she like lifted her legs and put her feet. And I have dreads at the time. I had just had regular hair. She like put her feet on my head <laughs> and like and like stop like like stepped me on. I don't know how that's even po- like she put her feet on my head and like 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 kicked me into it. And it was it was so bizarre because no one ever mm-hmm. just goes for feet stuff. Like right. like Ugh, get your feet off me. But in this weird and particular case, I was just like. Mm. <laughs> I get turned on. I, I is, get turned on. This was weird. I used to get turned on when a woman would slut me out like that and treat me like that. Like I like that shit because that that energy makes me want to do it right back. So when it's mm-hmm. my turn, oh, I'm finna choke the fuck out of you. I'm grabbing your hair and I like I like to grab the hair, rip around, not rip around, but like twist around, mm-hmm. right? Put this part of my elbow in the middle of their back. And that like creates the arch that I want right there. So that way I can control everything. Like I literally, like I, I, I'm treating you like a controller, like boom. So you gotta grab it, twist, right? So it's here. You gotta grab the right Seems amount of hair. Don't grab one patch, cause then you'll pull a hair out, fellas. Grab a nice amount, twist, nice, a nice twist. Now throw that elbow down her. Now she gonna hit it right here. Now you can control her any way you go. She right, she right here with it. She, bah, bah, bah. It's also how you wrangle a pig. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of WWF shit is that? <laughs> Pastor Young, guys, he just he just got his stuff. He don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, you don't know, Pat. Has that happened to y'all? I, I don't. I've never done the. I can give you. I can give you links to my videos. All right, I got instruction for videos out there on Pornhub. Like tutorial style, mm-hmm. straight to camera and stuff. I got, I got, a, right, I, got a hel- I got a helmet on, so you don't know it's me, but it's me. Subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to my Pornhub page. <laughs> Trust me, man. Listen, th- this is what I'm going to tell you. This is what I'm going to tell you, fellas. You know, but you ain't got to worry about that because you can look into a unique service called Blue Chew. All right, and that tablets combat all forms of ED and can help man gain that extra confidence for when it's time to perform. You understand me? Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, Boom. and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door. You ain't even gotta leave. You ain't gotta put no pants on. When it gets to the door, you can just wrench around, grab a box, and get back in the house. You understand me? The process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive a prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. You ain't got to put no pants on, player. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm all about. All the activities I ain't got to put no pants on for. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and the right strength for your prescription. Uh, you don't like swallowing pills? No problem, okay? Chewable. Blue Chew's 
uh, tablets are chewable. Do you understand me? They are chewable and they're made right here in the USA and they repair and ship direct so it's cheaper than going to a pharmacy. All right, so if you can benefit from a little extra confidence when it's time to perform, you know what I'm saying, get lumped, you know, um, 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 visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety, safety information. <laughs> All right, and we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code DIYS at checkout, and then you just pay $5 for shipping. That's right, you get your first uh, order for free um, at bluechew.com. Use the promo code DIYS to receive your first month for free and all you have to do is pay five dollars for shipping we thank blue chew for sponsoring this podcast uh and remember when you support our sponsors you support the podcast man so you know one hand washes the other one of the fellas try, listen fellas you saw maddie maddie try. said i didn't think that blue chew would work but man we all know what that means let me tell you something let me never tell listened you to us something. before listen to us now how the uncle's doing when you pull a bad chick up at the front? Hey, family, let me, let me, let me, nephew, nephew. Let that's me, you? That's you? Man, let me tell you, man. Okay, nephew. You, hey, you let me tell you something. Them. Bye-bye. Yeah, those are all, all those uncles are creepy, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> Do this one. If you yeah, don't yeah. listen to us, listen this time. Yeah. Blue Chew is it. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Mm -hmm. You hear me? I like Blue Chew. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well let's uh, let's end with some some fun stuff. All right, go fun. Some, some fun stuff. Um, <laughs> That's how Pat takes his pictures. I don't know why. They... No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Not all of them. Let's talk about some rich stuff. We were talking about we were talking about food. Let's talk about some drink. What do you think your alcohol budget is by every month? Is that me? Yeah. Uh, couple hundred? Every, my, I want to say a couple. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple hundred. Couple hundred? Yeah, it depends on what I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. If I'm just drinking that dude, I can get those bottles about 20, 20, 20 on the bottle. Okay. And if I switch to the gold bar, you know, that one's like, that's, that's a little bit more. Okay. So those, those are like, that's like 50. So if I get a couple of those, I'm already at 100. Right. For the month, so it just depends on what I'm drinking. So yeah, a couple hundred, right? Yeah, I would say between two and three. Wine, I'll get anywhere. I I be I be buying six dollar wine. I like, see, I don't. Nothing. My 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 wine that Bill Gloss is like it starts at forty. Oh. Forty four. No. But the good wine, you five, don't wake 10, up with the headache 15, with. Twenty, nah. but it tastes better. I don't. I, like my my parents are into wine. They gave me some eighty dollar wine once, and I was just like, you wasted your money. Give me the <laughs> give me the cheap sugary stuff. <laughs> Um, Johnny Depp is also into wine, but get this: thirty thousand a month. He spends thirty thousand on the thirty thousand dollars every single month of the year, just on wine. Now, think about that. Think about making thirty thousand dollars a month. <laughs> First of all, then. Think about making so much more than thirty thousand dollars that a month. you can afford to spend thirty thousand dollars a month on your leisure. One leisure thing, because you know wine don't come by itself. It probably comes with a date, maybe comes with a night of other stuff. But damn, damn, that is a that is a different tax bracket. I ain't mad at it though. I feel like no. you know what, like the more we work and you know the the. The more our hype builds and our success builds, the more I've been taking part in the spoils of life. And it was like, yo, you work hard for it, you deserve to to do that. Like, I don't got no big drug habit or anything like that. Uh -huh. My thing is cars. Like, I love cars. And I'm not buying luxury cars. Like, I like buying old schools, fixing them up. Sometimes yeah. I keep them, sometimes I sell them. Can you drop stick? Yeah, I can drop stick. Dang. I don't prefer, especially out here because traffic is so bad. It's the yeah. stop and go. You just constantly in first gear, not really getting to go past second. Yeah. Uh, and I never would do it in San, Fr San Francisco. Those people who have six ships off oh, there. Oh, with break. those hills? Oh, my what God. Are you, what are you forget doing? About it. Forget about it. Oh, I'm, but well, that's scary. I would love to have one good stick and I would just drive it maybe like once every couple months. Uh -huh. Start it up once a month just to make sure that everything's good. But yeah, yeah it's not it's not, not a real big thing for me. But I do love old cars, man. And, and I'm all the I'm, best ones are stick though they all are the best ones. and if you listen for all my people who want to get into it if you get a you get a classic car mm -hmm. always get a coupe first don't ever let somebody talk you into a sedan you want a coupe if you buy the sedan you're going to regret it wait okay? why 
because you want a two door. You want that old school to be something with those long doors that swing open. Uh -huh. Like the only four door I would recommend somebody getting is the Lincoln Continental because it has the kissing doors that open like that, like on Entourage. Okay, but that's really a car for you and your people. Like so, if you take it a family with that, you know that's cool. But if you're 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 a single guy, you're just dating. Always get a fucking coupe. I've seen a lot of people get tricked into buying sedans and they regret it. What? Don't be that person. What's the trick though? Is or do they work worse or are they? No, run, no, no. They're just like the, the most of the coupes are the sports models. Yeah, you know, the, 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 they're the true muscle cars. Right. There's some classic cars that are uh, you know four doors. Okay. Like you can get an old four door Nova, but it's not going to be the same as getting the two door. Like that coupe is just is where it's at for the classic car. You got to get the classic with the coupe. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't know that. I'm I'm just now getting into cars, and it's like all the coolest ones that I could see myself in has a stick, and mm -hmm. it's just like it's it, they look so smooth. But I tried driving. A, I I just need to learn how to drive because <laughs> it's it's yeah. tough. It is I, I, tough. I never even thought about that until like I was going somewhere and they had valet. And I just thought, I was like, damn, to work in valet, you got to know how to drive a drive stick. Everything. Yeah. You got to know how to drive everything. Yeah. And I was like, I got to learn how to drive a stick. A nigga's classic car, mm -mm. too. Mm -mm. Or like I learned how to drive a stick in the winter in St. Louis, too. Jesus. My, my, uh, my, my god sister, uh, Dana, had a, a Volkswagen. I had went back home. And this was before I was like doing anything. So I was, I was broke as fuck. She let me drive one of her cars. She had a lot of cars. She had this Volkswagen. And that's what I learned. I was like, you know how you drive a stick? I was like, yeah. No, I did not. I you had drove. Learn. Did yeah, you I learned the car, but mm -mm. mm -mm. because I had played video games, so I kind of got the concept of like, you know, uh, hitting the clutch and shifting at the same time. Coming out of first From is usually the hardest thing for most people. However, what made it more difficult for me because where I was standing at at the time to get on the highway, it was a hill. So I'm at first on the hill with my foot on the brake and the clutch. And as soon as the light changes, I got to, you know, hit the gas, go through first, and then I got to hit the clutch midway through a turn to go to second. And I'm learning. It's it's a lot. That's what driving is? That's too much. Yeah. I mean, but motorcycles are the same way. You got a clutch on a motorcycle, too. You shift the clutch. Yeah, you, you clip the clutch with your foot. So, like, when you get to the top speed in that gear, you put your foot up and you, you shift the clutch up, and then it goes to the next gear, and then you hit it again. And then when you're slowing down, oh you just have to downshift, too. So you have to hit the same clutch down to go to the next because if you come to a stop you can't go from a standstill stop to 40 miles an hour and that's what you know fourth gear is going to do so you have to go back hurt. down it's a lot but like you say all the cool ones are stick shift that sounds like it would give you like little mini heart attacks all the time like you ever been on a like on an incline at a red light mm -hmm. and then that little split second when you, everybody goes and you kind of go roll back. back. That's, Ooh, that's, what, that's, that. that's what I had to, I had to learn Ooh, I that. during that because the only way to get on the highway was on the hill coming from where I was saying that when I had my sister's car. So yeah. I had to learn that for a month. Shift? The shift on the hill. But, you come okay. out of first. But if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're still in a car like that, yeah. what is like, what 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 so is the foot, extra your, thing going? Your left foot and your left foot's on the clutch, your right foot's on the brake. Uh -huh. All right, when the light turns green, I have to simultaneously start pressing down on the gas while I'm lifting up on the clutch. Even on a hill. On the, yeah, because this cause like, but you have to do it fast. So it's like it's like mm, light turns green, mm, like that. And then as you cause you're gonna get to top speed more than likely like halfway through or right after halfway through that through that turn. So then, because I was making a left turn, so then I had to go back on the clutch, lift off the gas, shift to shift back to second, and then press down on the gas again to lift off the clutch. Oh, so the clutch is just what you hold down while you shift. Yes, that's what you shift with. You have to have hold the clutch down. And while I'd be you shift. scared in an automatic in that one second. So that's uh, like yeah. three steps in there. Yeah, nah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to learn. That's why, I like, trying on a on a on a parking lot or you know streets that don't. No, heavily occupied is the best accidents? way to do it. You, huh? you hit anybody? Mm -mm, I didn't get any accidents. Not once? Not Even once, while bro. learning? Yeah. But That's I'm a very crazy. cautious driver because I knew I right. wasn't confident in it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, like, driving my normal speed. I was driving slower. I stayed right. in the right hand or the middle lane. Right. I, like, I, I wanted to master it. So now I haven't driven a stick in, like, probably four or five years. But I Man. know, like, I can get it right back. Like, after right. after a day of driving, I'll get Muscle it right back. Memory. Yeah, or actually, you know what? Because I drove one of those slingshots, little three wheeler joints, and those are uh, six shift too. Oh, the, all of those um, are six shift. Really? Yeah. All of the all six the shift. cool stuff. Yeah, all man. All the cool stuff. Did you drive the one with the one uh, wheel in the front or the back? The one wheel in the back. 
Okay. So there's two wheels up front. It's got the radio in there and stuff I like know that. A shift. Yeah, that was, yeah a, that was a stick shift, brother. All of the cool cool cars got that. So mm -hmm. I gotta figure it out. Yeah, it's 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 hard, man. It's hard, but it is what it is, though. All right, our uh, our last and final story. Um, let's go with AMC. You a fan of Breaking Bad? Yeah, Breaking Bad, one of the greatest uh, series ever. And mm -hmm. I did not know uh, that television worked like this, but this might be good for us to know because uh, it, it makes the Chappelle show make a lot more sense. So apparently AMC allowed the writers of Breaking Bad to use the F word only once per season. So they had led, which led to extensive planning around when to employ it. So that's kind of like a cool, cool thing I want to go back and do. First of all, I want to find out the find the fucks in every season and why they why it was there. Yeah, you know, like why was this the moment that they're like, all right, I'm gonna use my one fuck. But I also didn't know that TV like lessened its its um, censorship in certain cases. Like mm -hmm. like when you think about it, like all the stuff that Chappelle was able to, yeah. to get away with. I guess it's specific to the deal. Have you ever heard anything like that? Well, I I know certain things like. FCC is weird, and I think every channel has their own like limits of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how many bitches you can get. <laughs> if you say nigga, it makes it an automatic different rating. Right. Honestly, like I, I know more of the stuff surrounding race than like the guidelines for FCC. Like, if you have uh, a black lead in a movie, or if you have two black leads, it's automatically considered urban. Automatically, they don't even give it a fucking shot. Wow. Twelve Years a Slave, urban film. Wow. That's why the posters overseas, they highlighted, um, uh, not Tom Cruise, but uh, uh, what's the other guy? He was in, um, Tom he was Achilles, Achilles. Brad Pitt. Oh. They highlighted Brad Pitt in 12 Years a Slave. Wasn't he Troy? Over, he, Troy. Yeah, okay, Troy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was Achilles in Troy. He wasn't Troy? Troy was a city. Troy wasn't the nigga? Troy's the city. Hilarious. I thought the nigga's name was Troy. No. <laughs> That's why they like, yeah. No. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Dude, you've never seen it? I, I remember oh the- Oh my God. You haven't seen the opening scene of Troy? Isn't isn't that the one where they all step forward and they're like, I'm him? I'm Troy? No, 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 no. You're thinking about life, ain't you? No. no there Troy was, a, was the one with Brad Pitt when he was like the he's a ultimate gladiator, warrior. Right? Yeah. I saw that in school. What are you, th thinking, are you thinking about Gladiator? Because Gladiator nah. was another movie. No, I no, because it was it was it was Brad Pitt, and I feel like there was a famous scene where they all stepped forward. Okay, and, is there anyone else? Is there no one else after he stabbed old boy? And did people step forward once? No, nah, oh, nobody stepped forward. The, the king's like, "What's your name, soldier?" And he was like, "Achilles, son of such and such, such and such." He's like, "I will never forget the name. Well, I'll never forget you." He's like, "Give this to your." Your king, he's like, oh, I, I, I fight for no one or something like that. I I forgot, but they, it makes total sense. Like, I don't think niggas were named Troy back then. <laughs> Just the city. <laughs> that Troy is a very. A <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I was like, this nigga wasn't Troy. <laughs> That's his name, right? <laughs> My bad, uh, Brad Pitt. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I remember what you were saying. Oh, the censor. He he was highlighted in Twelve Years a Slave or something. Yeah, on the poster. Oh, okay. It was like him, and then everybody under him, because they had to be able to sell it as, as a, a non as a non urban movie Jesus for it to Christ. like get the the big push on promotions, shit like that. So it's fucked up, but that's that's seriously what it is. Anytime it's two leads that are people of color, they automatically automatically label it. As a as a as an urban film, that's crazy. I'm which means it's not gonna get as much press. Which means it's not gonna get as much promo. Uh, they usually don't pay the actors as much. It's ridiculous, bro. It is really really fucking ridiculous. Is, is there any like huge mainstream hits that have two bl black actors that isn't considered an urban film like Marvel or something? I mean, Black Panther was still an urban film technically, but it did crazy numbers and it just showed them that we will support. Like, yeah. just give us a fucking, we would love a black super bad. We would love a black hangover. Do y'all realize the only black person in a hangover, the first hangover was Mike Epps, who was a drug dealer, right? And then Mike Tyson, that's it. 
Those are the only two black, and then the cop, the black lady is the cop. But she was like, she was like, B, she was a B character. She wasn't even like, not up in here. That's like, come on, bro. They gave her six lines in that that amazing movie. It's still a great movie, but I'm like, you see how they do it. This is why this is why Kev on Stage Studios is so important. This is why what we're doing is so important. This is why it's important to support black creators so we can continue to grow and expand the the the, the roles or create our own roles because you see how they do us. Let's be real. Think of how many black people you remember in Super Bad. Just, just be real with us. Exactly. This is ridiculous. So fuck it. Where is it? Oh, just the liquor store owner. Yeah. The, and she was overly urban, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good movie, though. It's a great movie. Uh, well, there you well, there you have it, then. That was, a, that, was a, that was weirdly inspirational. Guys, let's make our own lane, because they ain't, they ain't messing with us out here. But we know that we got it. Oh, yeah. We can do it ourselves. The so. scripts is coming. Trust them to leave. The spinoff from the Real Convenience Channel show is coming. The Buddy Cop show is coming. You know what I'm saying? We were on uh, Zooming with the homies last night. We were talking about Law and Order in the mm -hmm. Hood. Mm -hmm. And just making a show, like an eight-episode show of Law and Order in the Hood. Uh -huh. And everybody was talking about their characters. Like, I just want to be the captain. You know what I mean? He had the best glow up. The <laughs> Cap Captain Craig had the best glow up because he was, he was the boys basketball coach uh -huh. on Smart Guy. He oh, that's right. Guy. Yeah, he was a coach, and then he went to fucking Captain Cragen. He went from probably twelve fifty per episode, twelve twelve hundred dollars per episode, Damn. to probably ten k an episode Damn. on Law and Order. Glow up, glow the fuck up. You understand that's me? That's lit. Yeah. Shout out to him and Ice T. Right. Also Ice having a little little glow up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I we got to get out of here. So appreciate you guys for pulling up. It's been another episode of Damn and Net You Scary. For sure, for sure. Uh, we will see you guys next week. I've been your co-host Patrick Cloud, and I'm to hear more. Peace out, guys. Enjoy Later. yourself.